So uh, Joe Ponchabani claims that he sent me a response video to my last video to him, uh, but I haven't received it yet, so I don't have anything to respond to. But I already understand his position. It's a position I used to hold myself. Um, so rather than respond to his video, I thought I'd do a video expanding upon um, what I've learned about money and you know what my current position is on it, uh, and try to explain a little clearer what I did in my somewhat more angry response video to him. Um, so, uh, Jotun has been critiquing modern monetary theory, which I've talked about before, uh, from basically a false position. He he kind of critiques it as though it was a purely normative position, uh, rather than what it really is, which is a description of how our money system actually does work. Uh, and, and there are prescriptive ideas which follow from that uh, for, for modern monetary theorists, but is primarily what they're dealing with is a description, a map of how our money system works. Uh, so what the debt-free money people like Joe are doing is really living in an alternate universe uh, with a completely twisted view of how money works. And uh, as a result of that, the recommendations are all confused as well. Um, so I thought I'd maybe give a little primer on um, how money came about uh, you know, and you know, the difference between money and credit and how, how modern monetary theory explains them and um, how a more radical critique and look at them. Um, so credit really ex um, precedes money by quite a bit. Uh, the first form of economy in you know, the really earliest uh, hunter-gatherer societies is a gift economy. It's basically everyone looks out for one another. There's a system of mutual aid where, um, you know, I you know I have some I have the means to give you something. I I give it to you, and I know that you'll look out for me the, the same. Uh, this is basically what what Marx referred to as primitive communism when he says that you know it's from each according to his ability to each according to his need. Um, and uh, it's interesting to note this is basically a credit system. Uh, you know credit comes from the Latin word credo meaning I believe. It means you know I believe you'll look out for me just as I'm looking out for you. Um, now credit uh, properly speaking is a gift economy plus a unit of account, meaning that rather than sort of a general idea of us giving back to one another, there is a specific way of keeping track of just how much you owe me or, or how much I'm owed, how much I owe others. Um, you know, the unit of account would generally be like some like cattle, you know, I, um, I owe you one cattle or you owe me 1.5 cattle. But the point is, you don't. It, the, the exchange doesn't necessarily involve cattle, uh, like ac actual physical cattle. It'd be you know other things valued uh, in terms of cattle. So that's that's how a unit of account works. It's just a measurement by which other by which other things are measured. Um, that usually comes about often through um, means of restitution. Like you've harmed me, so you owe me this amount of. You know, whatever the unit of count is, um, and so the and so that's sort of the beginning of credit. And uh, in modern monetary theory, theory uh, they refer to credit as horizontal money because uh, it's all all um, all accounts sum to zero, all all accounting entries sum to zero, but with, with uh, credits and, and debits combined. Um, so money comes later. Money comes with the rise of the state, and it's uh, specifically with taxes. And and maybe this is a little bit of a stretch because but before taxes, there was uh, there was tribute, where you know an empire would conquer another place and demand tribute in terms of gold or whatever resources they had, um, and then from that they would mint coins. But 
uh, you know, I mean, essentially, that's it still became something valuable with which to trade with the conquered territories so that uh, they always had incentive to give and the citizens of the empire would have something to trade. Um, but basically, the, the premise behind the whole uh, MMT status, the tax and drive money theory, is that uh, if you owe something in taxes, uh, it becomes valuable uh, not just for you to collect it uh, to pay taxes, but you can exchange it with other people who owe taxes. So even if you don't personally have a tax burden, uh, you uh, other people who do have a tax burden will have things to exchange for the for that which is owed in taxes. Um, so that. Uh, so it's by imp imposition of tax of taxation that the state creates money, as we know it, and this is called vertical money by uh, modern monetary theorists. Uh, and um, the issue, it seems to me, is that the uh, debt-free money crowd, like like with people like Joe, basically wants uh, vertical money to replace horizontal money because they think that horizontal money, which is actually a more organic form of money. Uh, is some sort of diabolical evil. Uh, and I, I want to say that the state is in fact a unnecessary evil in our society. Um, Max Weber uh, refers to the state as the monopoly on legitimate use of force. Uh, we can see this in money through its imposition of taxes. We also see it in private property. Uh, it The state essentially you know, secures the private property rights upon which uh, these class distinctions work. Uh, the class distinctions work. Um, and, uh, you know, the state also involves a separate political class. That is what separates the state from government. Uh, the state means that, means that there is a separate class which rules over the other people. And this is you know, a fundamental challenge to the view of uh, people like Joe who see the state as the people. See, the, the state basically is, exists to secure existing class relations. It create an, creates an elite class with vested interest in perpetuating the status quo, including the state. Uh, so it is not and cannot be the people. Uh, it is not democratic either because democracy in order to actually be democracy is direct representative democracy is a contradiction in terms that is why the founders of this country called it a republic uh, because they knew that democracy was direct um yeah and it's interesting that in spite of all that the word democracy still has such enduring appeal because people i think have an intuitive sense that there is something wrong when the people don't direct a rule. Um, so, I want to talk a little about banking. Now, my defense of credit might be misconstrued as a defense of the banks. It is not. Um, the issue is bank, with banks is they have the legal monopoly on credit, thanks to the state, um, which allows them which allows for a kind of artificial scarcity, which allows them to seek profit uh, in the form of interest. Um, and and so, you know, the thing with the debt, uh, there's, there's a fundamental difference between a society which is mutually indebted to one another, which is the state of a gift economy, versus one in which there is one class which is indebted to another class, which is what we find uh, under conditions of capitalism, um, so uh, you know, and one one thing that leads to that position is uh, the phenomenon of interest. Um, now, as I've explained in previous videos, the whole problem of interest in terms of um, uh, interest is is not the cause of you know, capitalism strive toward toward infinite growth. That is actually a result of the competitive forces of capitalism and its tendency toward creative destruction. But um, what interest does result from is an artificial scarcity of capital, which in turn is made scarce by a land monopoly. So 
uh, essentially the power of the banks and the power of the capitalists is rooted in private property, uh, which in turn is secured by the state. So, and that is why I'm an anti-statist, an anarchist, in other words. Um, so let me talk about uh, mutual, mutual credit, which um, is what I've been advocating. Um, so the thing with mutual credit is it is a credit system without interest. Um, in the initial space, uh, phases, it may have some sort of monthly fee in order to keep up maintenance costs, but the point is uh, there is no compound interest. No, there is no uh, increasing interest for people who are late. It's um, it, it is basically a formalization of the uh, from each according to its ability, each according to its need principle, um, and we. Uh, and it's non-scarcity based in the, in the sense that with regular money, if I don't have enough money, then a purchase cannot be made. Whereas with this system, I can make the purchase and then uh, pay, work it off later. Um, and of course, uh, if, if a person you know has a great work history of you know, working off their debts, then they can increase their credit rating and allow for a greater um, you know, a, a greater ability to take things on credit. So, um, yeah, and the thing with mutual credit is it combines the debit and credit column into one thing where if you have more uh, you know, more debits than credits, then, um, then it'll be positive or if it's more on the credit side, it'll be on the negative. But you can you can run a positive or negative balance, um, and of course uh, you know the system will be biased towards those who can you know work towards a uh, zero or positive balance. Um, and of course this, uh, but the idea of course is to implement this as part of a dual power strategy, and a dual power involves um, you know helping build a new system in the shell of the old. So it means that it will be a uh, competing currency with the state currency for a while. And uh, by it, you know, doing this by itself is a lot of work for it to do, which is why it needs to be combined with other dual power strategies as well. Um, as we try to undermine the, uh, the state authority as, as exists right now, and uh, build alternative institutions. This is one alternative institution needs to build. Um, and, and so it needs to be combined with other attempts to weaken state power. And eventually we want to get to a point where people can stop paying their taxes and rely solely on these alternative institutions and let the state crumble under its own weight. Um, now, of course, you know the whole of a the whole idea of a non-scarcity-based credit system uh, may strike fears in some people of hyperinflation. Uh, the the thing about that is, um, first of all, hyperinflation occurs uh, when a state owes a uh, currency uh, owes a large debt in a currency other than its own, and when there is a uh, major loss of productive capacity. Whereas uh, what we as anarchists are trying to do is uh, o overcome the whole uh, you know, capitalist system in, in the uh, artificial losses of productive capacity come with it. Um, so um, hyperinflation is really not going to be an issue. But I mean, even with inflation, which involves um, a state creating more money than the uh, uh, than the net desired savings rate. When there is, uh, it would actually eliminate savings as we know it because it would instead be a, a uh, system of mutual credit. So uh, that issue uh, would overcome. And plus, um, hyperinflation, whereas it, even if you take the whole uh, too much money uh, chasing too few goods argument, uh, you have to under, you have to take into account. Uh, the fact that we would be going after private property, and that, that would t 
take care of the too few goods category. The, po the point is it would help produce a, a, um, a surplus of goods, or, or not, not a surplus, but we would overcome the scarcity of capital you know, and the scarcity of goods so that uh, there would be an increase in uh, production in the right uh, directions that would uh, overcome any inflationary tendency of the easier credit that, that would result. Um, so, and, and of course, I mean, there, there are some anarchists, particularly the anarcho-communist kind, who uh, uh, who advocate you know the elimination of all forms of currency or credit uh, altogether, and simply have a gift economy. What's important to understand is that um, is that mutual aid or gift economy is basically has the same form as credit. Uh, so um, mutual credit is a system of credit that could exist alongside other forms of mutual aid. Uh, and it would be there for any form of mutual aid that requires the kind of precision of an exact unit of account. Uh, there could be other kinds of mutual aid which you know don't require such precision and it's just so many people helping each other out. And the point is without a tax burden, um, people could decide for themselves which exchanges they need that kind of exactitude for and which ones uh, are are simply worth just helping each other out without any kind of uh, formal credit system to get in the way. So it's flexible to society's needs. Um, and of course, I mean, if it proves to be unnecessary altogether, it can just, you know, that that's fine too. But uh, it can exist to the extent that we need any kind of credit system, any kind of price system. Uh, it can be there for people in a way that is not uh, exploitative or coercive or any other or um, any of the things that the current monetary system is, and uh, can instead um, allow for a more cooperative economy and more cooperative society, uh, and um, help help bring about a the kind of non hierarchical society that us anarchists advocate. So uh, I guess that's it for now. Peace.